Hello. Welcome to Module 6. It's about adjusting entries. The purpose of this module is to discuss the concept of adjusting entries. In real life, after you prepare the trial balance, you may realize that there are entries that you have forgotten. These are jokingly called boo-boos. Have you heard that before? It always happens to everybody in life. Whether you're writing an exam or making accounting entries, it always happens. Now, in that scenario, you have to do what are referred to as adjusting entries. In a simple way, adjust, adjusting entries are those entries that correct for, quote, boo-boos. You make these entries in the T accounts, and then you redo the trial balance. The new trial balance is called adjusted trial balance. So here's a flowchart repeating what I just told you. Initially, you record transactions using T accounts. Then you do the trial balance. We did that before. Now, after doing the trial balance, you realize that there are certain things you omitted or things you forgot which should be included. These are called adjusting entries. They're actually correcting entries. So you enter those, and then you redo the trial balance and the trial balance is now called adjusted trial balance. Now you're done. From your trial balance, you do an income statement, statement of owner's equity, and balance sheet. So the purpose of this module is to discuss these adjusting entries. What are the most common types of adjusting entries? adjusting entries for inventory because inventory gets used up but people may forget to record it adjusting for prepaid expense remember once the service is received you have to delete the prepaid adjusting for unearned revenue if you got cash and then you provide the service you don't have unearned revenue so all these are m most common mistakes that accountants forget and they have to do this after doing the trial balance because when they do the trial balance they may have forgotten to enter these. Adjusting for depreciation, adjusting expenses not recorded, revenue not recorded. So these are the m most common types of adjusting entries. Let's do this one by one. Let's do the first one. I want you to spend a minute and read this question. Sylvester Company purchased 85,000 of supplies inventory during the year. At the end of the year, an inventory count revealed 30,000. Now, you have to do an adjusting entry because you don't have 85,000 anymore. When you find 30,000 left over, that means 55,000 has been used up. So supplies has to go down by 55,000. Supplies is an asset when it gets used up, it co gets converted to an expense. Question, what adjusting entry is required? Let's have a look. Previously, you had 85,000 in your supplies. Now, you want the balance to be 30. 
This is because 55,000 has left the warehouse. It got used up. When assets get used up, it gets converted to an expense. Let me repeat that. When an asset gets used up, it gets converted to an expense. So how much assets got used up? 55,000. So you transfer 55,000 from supplies, an asset account, and an expense has increased, supplies expense. So the journal entry is, there you go. Left entry supplies expense, right entry supplies used up. Let's co continue. Sylvester Company prepaid 24000 for insurance for the year. What's the entry? Well, cash goes down and a prepaid expense goes up. Correct? We did this before. On December 31, would an adjusting entry be required? Let's think about that. Here's how it stands. Cash minus 24, prepaid insurance plus 24. Right now, it's an asset because the insurance company owes you. At the end of the year, do they still owe you? No, because they provided you with the service. So nothing is prepaid anymore. You got the service. So what happens? There you go. 24000 goes out of prepaid insurance, which is an asset, and goes into an insurance expense account. So at the end of the year, this asset gets converted to an expense. So the journal entry is insurance expense, debit 24000 prepaid insurance, credit 24000 As I said before, prepaid insurance is only a temporary account. The net result is you paid cash 24000 you paid it for insurance, so insurance expense is 24000 That's it. The prepaid insurance account vanishes. Let's do another one. Have a look at this question. Sylvester Company received 4,000 in advance, keyword in advance, from a customer. They received it in October 31st. What's the entry to record this? We did this before. Cash plus 40 and a liability plus 40. The liability is unearned revenue. It's a liability because right now you owe the customer. The customer paid you, but you did nothing for the customer. So cash plus 40, unearned revenue, which is a liability, plus 40. On December, you performed the service. You did what you were supposed to do. So what happens? When you do something, when you provide a service, you got revenue. So revenue plus 40. You don't have the liability anymore because you did what you were supposed to do, so you don't owe them anything. 
So the liability minus 40. Which means unearned revenue has vanished. It gets converted to revenue. Unearned revenue, which is a liability, would now be shown as revenue. The journal entry is below you. Unearned revenue, left entry 40. Revenue, right entry, credit, 40,000. Let's have a look at the next one. Sylvester buys equipment for 100000 in January. The equipment has a life of five years. Think about this. Is any adjusting entry required on December 31st? What do you think? The value of the equipment has gone down by $20,000 because... If the life is five years, the cost is hundred. It means that every year, if you divide it, twenty thousand gets used up. When an asset gets used up, it gets converted to an expense. When equipment gets used up, it's called depreciation expense. So depreciation expense goes up twenty. And the value of the equipment goes down 20. Am I correct? If the value of the equipment goes down 20, you credit equipment 20,000, and you debit a depreciation expense 20,000. It looks good, but there's a problem. In real life, you can't show 20,000 as a minus in equipment. You cannot do that. Why? Think about it. Look at the equipment account. Plus is when you buy equipment. So equ equipment goes up. So minus is when you sell equipment. Have you sold 20,000 worth of equipment? No. That's not correct. So, the 20,000 has to be shown in another account and is called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is an example of a contra account. It means it's not an asset, it's not a liability, it's not revenue. It's not expense. It's nothing. You didn't know where to stick the 20,000 right entry, so you stuck it in there, so it's nothing. So the double entry is debit depreciation express 20,000, credit accumulated depreciation 20,000. Depreciation expense goes on the income statement. What happens to accumulated depreciation? It goes into the balance sheet. The, the way it's done is you show equipment at cost, which is 100000 what you paid for it. Then you deduct accumulated depreciation of twenty, and show people at the end of the first year that the equipment's only worth 80,000. This is called book value. Let me show you how it'll look. At the end of the first year, under assets, you'd have equipment 100, less accumulated depreciation 20. You show the equipment as worth 80 and call it book value. What about the second year? What would the accumulated depreciation be now? It's 20 from the first year, 20 from the second. So it's like 40,000 has got used up. So equipment at 100, less accumulated depreciation 40, 
and the book value is 60. What about the third year? The equipment, you paid 100. But now, 60,000 worth of equipment has got used up. So the book value is 40,000. And it goes on every year. How much will it, will it be worth at the end of the fifth year? Zero, because equipment would be 100. Accumulated depreciation would be 100. Th the equipment is worth nothing, which means it's written off the books. It's now off the books, because in theory, it's been used up. Is that OK? Let's go on to the next concept. At the end of the year, Sylvester Company finds it has not recorded a utility bill of 8,000, which came in December. The accountant has done the trial balance, but a bill which came in December of 8,000, the accountant forgot. What adjusting entry is required? Do you want to try? Stop this presentation for a minute and have a crack at it. Have you tried it? Here goes. You have an expense because you received the bill and the service. Expense goes up 8. You owe money to a supplier, so accounts payable liability is plus 8,000. Shall we go on? Here's another example. At the end of the year, Sylvester Company finds it has not recorded nor paid salaries of $20,000 to its employees worked in the last week of December. What adjusting entry is required? They provided you with the service, the employees. You had an expense, but it wasn't recorded. Do you want to stop this presentation and have a crack at it? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Stop now. OK, are you done? You have an expense, which is salary's expense, but there's a liability, too, because you owe them money. You call it salary payable. Salary expense plus 20,000. Salary payable plus 20,000. So expense went up and a liability went up. So the journal entry is you debit salary expense 20,000 and you credit salary payable 20,000. Let's do a problem together. It's the Pioneer Advertising Agency, and they chose October 31st as their closing date rather than December 31st. Here's how their trial bans looked. What I'd like you to do is to print this out. It's a problem we're going to do together, but I'd like you to print this out. I want you to do a little exercise for me. I want you to open T accounts. Start with the top and work down. For example, you start with cash, have a T account, and you have for cash left entry 15,002. Write another one for advertising supplies, T account, and you have a left entry 2,500. Open another one for prepaid insurance, a T account, left entry, 600. And you keep going. And do every single one of them. Stop this presentation right now and do that for me. When you're done, 
will restart. Now, here are the questions. After October 31st, the accountant of Pioneer Advertising Agency realized that information was omitted, so he or she has to make adjusting entries. L let me give you them individually. They find that they have not recorded services performed to a customer. On December 31, an inventory count revealed 1,000 supplies on hand. December 4th, the agency paid $600 for one year fire insurance policy. The effective date was December 1st. So just assume $50 gets used up per month. Depreciation on office equipment is $40 for the month. Agency had received $1,200 in advance for services expected to be completed by December 31. $400 of those were earned. A Agency earned 200 for advertising services that were not billed to customers. You signed a 5,000 three-month note payable on December 1st. The note requires an interest of 12% per year. I've given you a hint how to figure out interest payable. Salaries for the last week of December were not recorded nor paid. The amount at 1,200. Here's the question. Let me repeat this. On December 31st, they had to do these adjusting entries. What I want you to do now is do the adjusting entries on your T accounts and write down the adjusting entries as journal entries. So two things. Write down on the T accounts what you think the adjusting entry should be for each of them, and write it down in the form of journal entries. Stop now, take as long as you need, and do this. When you're done, we'll restart. Are you done? Here's the answers. This is what it should look like. Print this out and check with yours. I'll give you some more. Print this out and check it with your answers. Did you get it? Now what I want you to do is prepare an adjusted trial balance. Close up each account and do a trial balance. Stop right now and do your trial balance. Take as long as you need. Are you done? It's an adjusted trial balance. The purpose of the adjusted trial balance is to prove the quality of the total debit balance and the total credit balance in the ledger after all adjustments have been made. I'm going to show you the adjusted trial balance for Pioneer Advertising Agency. I'm assuming you've done yours, so you can check yours with the solution which comes now. Does it look good? Does this tally with your answer? If so, I'd like you to do an income statement, statement of owner's equity, 
and balance sheet. When you are done, I'd like you to restart. So stop right now. I taught you how to do an income statement. I taught you how to do a statement of owner's equity. And we studied how to do a balance sheet. So you have the tr adjusted trial balance. Stop right now. Do it. And when you're done, you'll get the answers. Are you done? Here it comes. I show you what items to take. And there go, comes the income statement. Does the profit of 2860 correspond with yours? Check it. Then you do statement of owner's equity. Here it comes. Does that tally with yours? The ending balance should be 12360 If you are done with that, you could go on to the balance sheet. Here it comes. This is a balance sheet. You know it balances because you know it's correct because it balances. Does this tally or correspond with your answer? If so, you have a very good understanding of adjusting entries. This ends this module.